The following program contains scenes which some audience members may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Sharks. Of all the creatures in the sea, they're the ones to inspire the most fear. And no wonder, sharks are the sea's top predators, and when humans enter the water, they become a part of the food chain. Experts know that sharks are unpredictable animals and attacks can happen to anyone at any time. But still, the attack that happened on Dr. Eric Ritter, a shark behaviorist, was shocking to say the least. It's April 9th, 2002. Dr. Eric Ritter is setting up film equipment for a Discovery Channel film crew. The crew is here to film Dr. Ritter and zoologist Nigel Marvin as they wade through chum-filled waters surrounded by sharks. The point of this extremely dangerous stunt was to show that sharks can be approached and studied in the right conditions. On this April day, Eric Ritter's faith would finally be tested. Look at this big one here. That is a monster bull shark there. That's a, that's a good side puppy. <laughs> we were shooting for a television show, and we wanted to have it in a very spectacular way. And these are 400 pound, eight foot sharks. Various species of sharks circle the two men, but one draws all the attention, the bull sharks. Named for their big, blunt noses, bull sharks can be found in shallow, warm waters of every ocean. They can also tolerate brackish and fresh water, and sometimes swim up rivers and estuaries. Ranging in size from 7 to 11 feet, they're fast and aggressive, and they headbutt their prey before attacking. They have gray tops and white bellies, and their fins have dark tips, especially during their younger years. They're not endangered, although fishermen often seek them out. Look at that bull shark there, just touch me with the dog look at this one. The two men have been in the water for over an hour now. The very first uh, second when I felt something was gonna happen, I only felt a bump. The bump is not unusual. If you work with sharks, they bump you once in a while to check you out. So I realized I get bumped, so I did not move. And then I felt kind of pain. I realized, okay, she got me. Most of the time, these sharks let go, but in my case, she did not. What happened for the next one or two seconds is all kind of blur. The shark has sunk its teeth into Eric's calf. So I tried to stand up and tried to lift my leg because I realized that the only thing that she lets go is if I put her in a vertical position or in a position where her gill slits will be affected, that I squeeze them together. But instead, the shark takes off the muscle and opens an artery. I can't believe that happened. I'll never forget how effective those teeth and those jaws. I mean, Eric's leg, in, in, the bite was in the calf, and it was just like us biting into a watermelon. I lifted my leg out of the water. I realized that just more few muscle pieces, uh, skin pieces are hanging down my leg, and I saw for the first time my shin bone. But it kicked in right away. The bleeding was so intense that I realized something has to happen very quickly or I'm gonna die. Critical to Eric's survival is that he's close to shore and surrounded by help. He's taken to a local aircraft and flown to Florida within 45 minutes of his accident. It takes eight hours of surgery to save his life and four weeks of treatment before they'd be sure he would keep his leg. The shark had ripped off Eric's entire calf muscle. It was a very impressive looking wound and at first glance I was concerned that uh, he would lose the leg. Eric had lost 50% of his blood. The major artery in his leg had been cut. We had to reestablish blood flow through that artery. And this is when I made the decision to take a piece of vein from his other leg and to use it as a bridge to gap the, the two parts of the artery that had been cut. 
Ritter thinks of the accident as it never happened, and his reaction to it has been scientific. You know, you work with these animals for so many years, but it's always a guessing, and this is when you, in his job you always ask, okay, how much damage could this animal do? Now, I know. Now this question has been answered in a very painful manner, but this gives me now even a better understanding of, of these animals. Dr. Ritter still continued his research in shark-human interactions, and still does the very same stunt that almost cost him his life. Ritter also trains inexperienced divers on how to stay safe around sharks. What's your favorite shark? The bull shark. That hasn't changed since the bite? No, my, my bite never changed my, my ideas about these animals. Actually, if, if there's one change, it's actually, I think it got me even closer to these animals. I think I understand them even better. I feel even more comfortable with these animals now. 